Welcome back to Twisted Skins Tech. Looking back to 2011 and where we are today, 2017, there has been a massive increase in graphics card performance. If we take something like the flagship GTX 580 from NVIDIA and we compare it to today's 1080 Ti, there's been about a 400% increase in performance. That's pretty impressive stuff. However, when we look at CPUs, they've definitely not received the same sort of boost. If we take something like an i5-2500 and we compare it to the current lineup of the 7600 Kabylate processors, there's been about a 36% increase in performance. Hardly groundbreaking stuff. But what about integrated graphics cards? Have they had the same meagre improvements as CPUs or have they increased to the same amount as GPUs? So in today's video we're going to find out by benchmarking my i5-6600K which comes with the HD530 against an i5-2500 which has the HD2000 integrated graphics cards. Definitely there's going to be an improvement but by how much do you think? So let's find out. Up first we have the 2010 classic Mass Effect 2, which is definitely an old title but I thought this would be a good starting point for these integrated graphics. At 720p I was pleasantly surprised that both iGPUs were able to run this title to one degree or another. With the HD2000 returning us an average of 34 frames per second and the HD530 almost locked at 60fps. As you can see from the 1% and 0.1% lows, the experience was definitely smoother on the HD530. Moving up a resolution to 900p made aiming and shooting with the HD2000 considerably harder due to the average frame rate now dropping down to 15fps, making for a pretty choppy experience overall. The HD530 was pretty unfazed by the extra pixels, coming up with a 53fps average and staying above 38 frames per second 99% of the time. Finally at 1080p the HD2000 was completely unplayable delivering an average of 11fps and ever lower 1% and 0.1% lows. The HD530 soldiered on with a 255% increase at 39 frames per second average and stayed above 28fps 99% of the time. There was minimal improvement graphically when changing from 900p so that is the resolution I would stick at on this title with the HD530. Up next we have the original 2011 title Skyrim, as this is definitely less demanding than last year's special edition version. I was genuinely shocked that the HD2000 almost managed a playable experience on this game at 720p. As you can see it averaged 23fps and stayed above 15fps 99% of the time. Once again this was a breeze for the HD530 which returned an average of 60fps and stayed above 32fps 99% of the time, even during heavy combat. Moving up to 900p really challenged the HD2000 which was only able to muster 15fps average and stayed above 10fps 99% of the time. At this resolution the HD530 returned an extremely playable experience averaging 58fps that's a 287% increase and little change at the 1% lows as it stayed above 31fps 99% of the time. Finally at 1080p the HD2000 was a complete slideshow averaging 12fps with lows of just 6 and 5. Ouch. Although the experience was still playable with the HD530 it was definitely being put to the test delivering an average of 48fps and staying above 25fps 99% of the time. Again I would recommend 900p for the HD530. Moving on to the colourful 2013 title Bioshock Infinite I was surprised just how good this game looks even with the graphics preset knocked all the way down to very low. Unfortunately even at this setting the HD2000 was a pretty sketchy experience. At 720p it averaged just 15fps and stayed above 10fps 99% of the time. The HD530 on the other hand managed an average of 76fps, that's a whopping 400% increase and it certainly showed as this was smooth as silk on the integrated GPU. Upping the resolution to 900p we see more of the same with the HD2000 unplayable returning an average of 10fps and once again the HD530 gave a great performance with a 440% increase this time averaging 54fps. At 1080p the HD2000 was begging for mercy as it returned an abysmal average of just 7fps 
The HD 530 was also starting to feel the strain as it turned in an average of 41 FPS and stayed above 26 FPS 99% of the time, which is quite different compared to the earlier results we've had. Best played at 900p if you want a butter smooth experience. Finally, we have the 2004 remastered classic Fable Anniversary, which was released in 2014 and run on the lowest graphical settings. I expected this to really test both iGPUs, and it certainly did that. At 720p, the HD2000 was definitely unplayable, averaging 12fps, with combat that was slow and unresponsive. Even the HD530, that was crushing it at 720p, was having a harder time than usual, averaging 41fps, but thankfully it stayed above 30fps 99% of the time. Moving up to 900p, the HD530 was able to keep above 30fps average, but occasionally dipped to 24fps 1% of the time. The HD2000 was not so fortunate, giving us an average of 8fps and 1% lows of 7 frames per second. Finally, at 1080p and for the first time in this test, the HD530 was only able to average 25fps, with dips down to 19fps 1% of the time. However, that's still a 257% better result than the 7fps average from the HD2000, which dipped as low as 5fps. For the sake of your eyesight, do not repeat this test. So there you have it guys. The big improvements that we see in integrated graphics are pretty much in line with the increase we've achieved with dedicated graphics cards over the years. Would I recommend gaming on the HD2000? No, I definitely would not. In this case, you'd be better served to keep 20 to 30 pounds or dollars back and purchase something like a Radeon R7250, which will give significantly better performance than either of these integrated graphics. If you're running the HD530 because you're saving for a dedicated GPU, then this will be a playable experience, as long as you keep those settings low and you're gaming to those older titles, which tend to be less demanding. I just wanted to say thanks to all of you who have recently subscribed, and sorry for the delay to those of you who are already subscribed. If you enjoyed this look back at how far we've come in integrated graphics performance, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay passionate about PC whatever your budget, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.